Tonight, several developing stories as we come on the air. Millions now facing the threat of severe weather. The storms could impact record-breaking holiday travel. And the special counsel is seeking a new gag order for former President Trump. First, a dangerous storm threat. More than 20 million Americans in the path following several weeks of damaging weather. Multiple states in the central U.S. at risk for possible tornadoes. And that system will head toward the East Coast for Memorial Day. The timing couldn't be worse with Americans on the move this holiday weekend. As TSA says, a record number of passengers, nearly 3 million, passed through airport security on Friday. Our weather team tracking it all. Special counsel Jack Smith seeking a new gag order against former President Donald Trump. His urgent appeal to the judge in the documents case to stop Trump from making false statements about law enforcement on social media. Smith saying the former president put the agents in danger by making false and misleading statements about the FBI search at Mar-a-Lago. Mary Alice Park standing by. Also tonight, the emotional homecoming for a Pennsylvania man arrested in Turks and Caicos after ammunition was found in his luggage. He's now back home with family. His sentence suspended instead of what could have been 12 years behind bars. But what happens now to four other Americans facing similar charges? A deadly Russian strike on a shopping center in eastern Ukraine. Dozens injured. More than 200 people may have been inside when the building was bombed. The release of audio recordings raising new questions about why a sheriff's deputy shot and killed a U.S. airman in his own apartment. The first call reported people fighting, but his family insists the man was alone. Grammy-winning rapper and singer Nicki Minaj arrested at the airport in Amsterdam. What police are now saying. Opening weekend for the tallest water slide in America, 145 feet high. And America Strong speaking from the heart just 45 minutes after his father's funeral, a valedictorian's powerful graduation message of hope. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight. Good evening. It's great to have you with us on this Saturday. I'm Whit Johnson. As we come on the air tonight, more than 20 million Americans across the nation's heartland are on alert as severe storms threaten to upend holiday weekend plans. Hail, strong winds, and potentially powerful tornadoes are all possible. More severe weather is expected through the weekend. After a very active week, more than 100 tornadoes reported since Sunday, and it comes during one of the busiest travel weekends ever. More than 38 million Americans are expected to drive to their destinations over this Memorial Day holiday. The TSA on Friday screening nearly 3 million passengers, a single day record. ABC's Jacqueline Lee is standing by from Southern California. But first, let's get right to meteorologist Samara Theodore from Oklahoma City tracking it all. And Samara, this could be a dangerous night in some places. That's correct, Whit. Here in the Heartland, they have been dealing with an onslaught of severe weather for the past few weeks, and tonight the threat remains. Now, we are keeping a close eye in the southeast. There's a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for parts of Georgia, but a tornado watch is in effect from southern Kansas down to Texas, and here where I am in Oklahoma City until 11 p.m. This is for violent tornadoes, long-track tornadoes possible. Overnight, this threat shifts farther east, with storms driving through the Midwest. Cities like St. Louis, Lexington, and Nashville should be on high alert tomorrow as they head through Sunday for tornadoes and hail. By Monday, this arrives on the East Coast, bringing heavy rain. For those traveling along the I-95 corridor Monday evening, you may encounter flooding. In fact, there is risk for flash flooding. Wit? All right, we'll keep watching those alerts, Samara. Thank you. And millions of Americans are keeping an eye on that forecast as they hit the roads and the skies. And what has already been a record weekend for holiday travel, ABC's Jacqueline Lee is at Burbank Airport. Tonight, this Memorial Day weekend, already a blockbuster. Here at the zoo right now. TSA says it screened more than 2.95 million people at airports across the country Friday, the busiest day ever in the agency's 22 year history. Very, very busy. Nearly 3 million Americans expected to travel today. I try to be flexible, you know, understanding that there's more pressure on the system, so you have to be a little bit more uh, cognizant of your, you know, options. The month of May smashing records for TSA. Four of their busiest days ever happening just this month. We'll see several over 3 million passenger days across the entire you know, 430 airports that are in the United States. The agency beefing up staffing thanks to a new compensation plan passed by Congress. Airlines flying larger aircraft this weekend to accommodate crowds, but still battling a nationwide shortage of air traffic controllers. 
Way in order to keep air travel on schedule, the FAA is opening up airspace typically restricted for space and military operations. Whit. Jacqueline Lee, thank you. Now to the race for the White House. Former President Donald Trump tonight doubling down on his false claims that President Biden authorized the use of deadly force against him during the FBI raid of Mar-a-Lago last year. Special Counsel Jack Smith seeking a gag order to stop Trump from making the statements, saying they pose a risk to law enforcement. Here's ABC's Mary Alice Parks. Tonight, just hours after special counsel Jack Smith asked for a gag order on the former president, Donald Trump again pushing serious disinformation on Truth Social. The Justice Department calling Trump's words dangerous. Trump today posting this false claim that Biden's DOJ authorized use of deadly force against him in the FBI raid. The statement untrue. In fact, the FBI's procedures, included in a newly unsealed court filing, say law enforcement cannot engage in using deadly force unless there is a, quote, reasonable belief an officer is in immediate danger and are standard for all search warrants. Attorney General Merrick Garland underscoring the language was nothing out of the ordinary and actually about restricting the use of force. The FBI advises it is part of the standard operations plan for searches and in fact, it was even used in the consensual search of President Biden's home. Smith arguing before the judge this weekend that Trump's false statements pose a threat to law enforcement. Trump tonight expected to make his pitch to voters attending the Libertarian Party's national convention, but he could be in for a rude awakening. Do we reject? Attendees here who pride themselves on pushing a limited government, telling me they don't see Trump as a libertarian, but a Republican rival. There hasn't been a single internal libertarian who's been happy about the Trump speech. Independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. at the convention yesterday, bashing Trump for COVID lockdowns. Mary Alice Parks joins us from the Libertarian National Convention. So Mary Alice, what are officials there saying about why Trump was invited? Yeah, it's interesting, Whit, because the Libertarian Party will nominate their own candidate for president. But the party chair said she welcomed the debate, the exposure for her party. This is a small group, but they have made a big difference in the past, especially in some key states. And they very much could, again, especially in a year when we know so many voters are frustrated with the two major parties. Whit. Another interesting dynamic in the campaign. Mary Alice, thank you. Tonight, an American father is back home in Pennsylvania, three months after officials in Turks and Caicos found ammunition in his checked luggage. Brian, Brian Hagerich is two children there to greet him at the airport overnight. When he arrived back in Pittsburgh, his sentence suspended, and now the attention turns to four other Americans still facing similar charges and possible jail time. Here's ABC's Zorin Shah. Tonight, American Brian Hagerich back home in Pennsylvania, coaching his son's T-ball league. Reunited with family after a Turks and Caicos judge granted him a suspended sentence. <laughs> Believing a 12-year sentence for carrying ammo was arbitrary and disproportionate to the crime committed. I feel like the weight of the world has been lifted off my shoulders. Now, the focus shifting to the four remaining Americans faced with similar charges. You know, I'm equally as excited for them to get home. We're optimistic. You know, our cases are all very similar, uh, but they do have some differences. But hopefully a precedent was set today. The other four Americans, Sharita Greer, Tyler Wenrick, Ryan Watson, Michael E. Evans, all are also faced with a mandatory minimum 12-year prison sentence. After several lawmakers met with government officials pleading for leniency, overnight they made another push. We need to work relentlessly to bring the other Americans home. And the next American to face sentencing will be Tyler Wenrick. That will take place at 10 a.m. on Tuesday. With a lot of eyes will be on that sentencing. With. Yes, they will. Zorin Shah, thank you. Overseas now in the war in Ukraine, this video here showing the deadly strike on a large shopping complex in the country's second largest city, Kharkiv. Officials say as many as 200 people may have been inside at the time. President Zelensky appealing tonight for more air defense weapons to protect the city. Here's ABC's Patrick Rival. Tonight, a massive inferno swallowing a bustling home improvement supermarket in Kharkiv. Ukraine blaming a Russian strike. At least six people killed and nearly 40 injured, local officials say, warning the toll may well rise. 
security camera footage capturing the strike. The gardening season has just started, this man says. There were many, many people inside. As many as 200 shoppers, according to President Volodymyr Zelensky, pleading to Western leaders once again for sufficient air defences. The US passed a $61 billion aid package to Ukraine last month. Another separate strike on central Kharkiv today, also injuring 20 people. But relentless strikes are now hitting Kharkiv almost daily as the war intensifies with Russia's major new offensive northeast of the city. The Biden administration is now reportedly debating whether to finally allow Ukraine to use US supplied weapons to hit targets inside Russia, something that Ukrainian officials are pleading for. Wait. Patrick Revel for us tonight. Thank you. Hundreds are feared dead after a landslide in the mountains of Papua New Guinea and southwestern Pacific. Survivors using their hands to search through debris. Efforts to reach the remote region have been hampered by rough terrain and damaged roads. Residents are without food and water. President Biden saying the U.S. stands ready to assist with rescue efforts if requested. Now to new details from the deputy involved shooting of a U.S. airman in his own Florida apartment. The county sheriff's office releasing official calls and records from the incident. But major questions remain about how this encounter turned deadly in just a matter of seconds. Here's ABC's Morgan Norwood. Tonight, we're hearing for the first time the concerned call that led to the fatal confrontation between a Florida sheriff's deputy and U.S. senior airman Robert Fortson. Sounds like she's like he's fighting with someone else, and it's she's saying that it sounds like it's getting a little bit out of control. The non-emergency call coming from an employee at the apartment complex where Fortson lived, who said a resident reported overhearing a rowdy domestic dispute. The employee giving them this apartment number. The apartment number is going to be 1401. It's the same unit seen in this body camera video, showing the moment deputies arrive at Fortson's door. Sheriff's office, open the door. Fortson opens up. You can see he's holding a gun, but it's pointed down. Within seconds, the deputy fires several rounds, striking Fortson in the chest and arm. The 23-year-old later died at a hospital. Tonight, as the community remembers the decorated airman who served overseas, major questions remain unanswered. The sheriff's office has not identified the deputy involved, and the incident report they released is heavily redacted. Fortson's family, meanwhile, claims he was alone in the apartment at the time. His girlfriend saying they were on a FaceTime call discussing weekend plans the moment that authorities knocked on the door. The family now demanding justice. Tell the truth about my son. I know my son did not do anything to you guys. And tonight, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement is investigating WIT. They'll turn over their findings to the state attorney's office. WIT. Morgan Norwood, thank you. News development late today out of Amsterdam, where American rapper and singer Nicki Minaj was arrested at the airport. She tweeted that Dutch police told her they'd found marijuana in her bags. Minaj posted the encounter on Instagram Live. Yeah. Your Honor, arrest. I'm the police officer. I'm the deputy of the public prosecutor. Uh, we will bring you to the police station. What? Yes. For what? You can go uh, because you are uh, carrying drugs. I'm not carrying drugs. Okay. But... Minaj was fined and released from custody, but her concert in England had to be postponed. Memorial Day weekend sales are now in full swing, but as credit card borrowing nears record highs, services like Buy Now, Pay Later are growing in popularity. And as ABC's Alexis Christophorus explains, government regulators are taking notice. Tonight, it's one of the busiest shopping weekends of the year. Deals so big, no one's even close. Retail sales stalled last month as still high inflation and interest rates curbed spending. Shoppers hunting for bargains this holiday weekend are expected to put most of those purchases on credit cards. Others will turn to buy now, pay later. It's like you trick yourself, right? It's not a $200 purchase anymore. It's four easy payments of 50 bucks. One in five shoppers have now used Buy Now Pay Later services, often interest-free, regardless of their credit history. But new rules tonight from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau meant to protect consumers and treat these loans more like credit cards. It's become too big to ignore. Federal regulators cracking down on lenders who will now be required to pause payments while they investigate a disputed charge. Give 
give refunds for returns or canceled services and provide periodic billing statements. But some say the rules don't go far enough since these companies are not required to report your payment history to credit bureaus. Experts say that could encourage overspending and be a hidden source of risk to lenders at a time when credit card borrowing is near a record high of over $1.1 trillion and late payments are on the rise. The new buy now, pay later rules take effect in August. Still, experts say consumers need to remain cautious. Depending on the lender and length of the loan, any late or missed payments could carry fees and interest charges of more than 30 percent. Wit. Alexis Christophorus, our thanks to you tonight. Still ahead, the tragic story, a young PGA golfer who died a day after withdrawing from a tournament and a sign of progress in Baltimore as cruise ships return to the harbor. Next tonight, this sad news. PGA golfer Grayson Murray died this morning. Murray withdrew yesterday from a tournament in Fort Worth, Texas, citing an illness. No word on a cause of death. Murray had dealt with alcohol and mental health issues in the past. In January, he won the Sony Open in Hawaii, his second tournament win. Grayson Murray was just 30 years old. Cruise ships have returned to the port of Baltimore for the first time since the Key Bridge disaster. A Royal Caribbean ship setting sail today. A Carnival cruise ship departs tomorrow. Crews have opened a 400 foot wide channel, enough for one way traffic for the largest vessels. They hope to reopen the full channel early next month. When we come back, hope you're not afraid of heights. We'll show you the tallest water slide in the country. To the index now, a new bronze statue of baseball pioneer Jackie Robinson will soon be on its way to Wichita, Kansas. That's to replace the one that was stolen in January and destroyed. The replacement paid for by donations from the public and Major League Baseball. Robinson, of course, broke baseball's color barrier. One person has pleaded guilty to the theft. Police say racism was not a factor. The thieves apparently wanted to sell the bronze for scrap. And opening this holiday weekend, the tallest water slide in the U.S. It's called the Rise of Icarus at Olympus Water Park in Wisconsin. It costs $8 million to build and features five spiraling slides, the highest of which towers 145 feet above the ground. Good luck. When we come back, a valedictorian fights through his pain in a heartfelt speech. Finally tonight, America Strong, the valedictorian who summoned his strength at the most difficult moment. When Alam Hajic walked onto the stage to deliver his graduation speech. Hello to all the graduates, families and staff. Few in the audience knew about the pain in his heart. I didn't know if I could give my speech. I knew I had to, but I didn't know if I could. But the valedictorian at Early College High School in Carrollton, Texas, had an important message. At the beginning of the spring semester, my family received the news that my father had cancer. My father died yesterday, May 15th, 2024. And I, had, I attended his funeral today, right before graduation. That's why my shoes are muddy. That's why my arms are shaking. Alum delivering the speech just 45 minutes after burying his father, who passed away following a five-month battle with pancreatic cancer, something he mostly kept private until now. My dad was a hardworking guy. He always did everything he could to provide for us. Standing tall on that stage to honor his father, an immigrant from Bosnia who at one time delivered Domino's pizzas to help the family get by. And I looked in the audience and I saw people who were touched by what I was saying. Suddenly I didn't feel so alone. That's when I knew I could get through it. Alum ending with this heartfelt message about perseverance and love. I'm going to go to college and I'm going to spend every hour of every day working as hard as I can to achieve all of my goals because that's what he wanted and I'm going to do it for him. Yeah. And I want all of you to look to your loved ones and say you wouldn't do the same. Wow. Your father would have been proud, and we are too. Thanks so much for watching tonight. I'm Whit Johnson in New York. Have a great night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.